Riley here from the Book of Memory over at RileyJFroud.com. Hope you've all had a fantastic month and I'm here with you again to give you some more bookish nonsense. <laughs> so when I was doing my research on what to talk about today, I discovered that May is actually quite stuffed to the brim with, should we say, literary anniversaries and a few other special events thrown in. And I couldn't decide which one I wanted to talk about. So today I'm going to talk about them all. And for each anniversary of a birthday or a death or, or another special event, we're going to give you some interesting facts and then maybe offer a few suggestions on how to celebrate it. So you could say today is about a mishmash of interesting tidbits, a cacophony, if you will. I do like that word, cacophony. It's a great word. So we'll go straight in. On the 9th of May, it is the anniversary of J.M. Barry's birthday. He was born in 1860, and you will know him from uh, Peter Pan, Peter Pan fame. Um, and here are some interesting bits of information about J.M. Barry. So, so J.M. Barry was actually friends with Arthur Conan Doyle of Sherlock Holmes fame, who we will actually be talking about again a bit later. But, um, he also wrote a spoof story about Sherlock Holmes in which J.M. Barry killed off Holmes before Conan Doyle actually killed him off in The Final Problem in 1893. So J.M. Barry was the first person to kill Sherlock Holmes. It's a claim to fame. <laughs> he started a celebrity cricket team and the uh, some of the other members on their team were Arthur Conan Doyle, Jerome K. Jerome, A. A. Milne and H. G. Wells. So quite a, an exciting cricket team there. He didn't, as many people believe, invent the name Wendy as it was already in use as a shorter or, or uh, endearing version of the name Gwendolyn. But he did give the name to the Wendy House. So the Wendy House you sit in or sat in as a child <laughs> was named by J.M. Barry. Before that, they were called Mammy Houses. So if it wasn't for Peter Pan, you might have been sitting in a Mammy House, not a Wendy House. Legend has it that he ordered Brussels sprouts every day for lunch because he enjoyed saying the words. And fair play to him, the words are fantastic to say. Go on, try it. Brussels sprouts. It's lovely to say, isn't it? So how can you celebrate J.M. Barry's birthday on the 9th of May? Well, my suggestion would be to sit in a Wendy house and eat a plate of Brussels sprouts. And then maybe you can give us a little Brussels sprout recital. See how different ways you can say Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Okay, I'll stop being silly now. On the 15th of May is the anniversary of Emily Dickinson's death in 1886. Not so many interesting facts about Emily Dickinson. She was quite... um. She kept herself to herself. She was actually a recluse for the last 15 years of her life and hardly left the house. Historians don't really know why that they suspect it might have been depression or anxiety, or perhaps it was just so she could focus on her writing. But actually, only between seven and ten of her poems were published while she was still alive, and most of them were published anonymously and without her consent. She didn't have much of a social life, she was not married, she didn't have kids, so perhaps one way you could celebrate uh, the death of Emily Dickinson, or commemorate. Oh, commemorate's not the right word either, is it? <laughs> One way you can celebrate uh, the Emily Dickinson's death is by staying in your house and not talking to anyone. An introvert's dream, I believe. <laughs> and then, moving back to Arthur Conan Doyle, I told you we'd be coming back to him. It is his birthday, or was his birthday, on the 22nd of May. He was born in 1859. And I have some quite interesting facts about Arthur Conan Doyle, actually. Did you know his full name was Arthur Ignatius Conan Doyle? As if Arthur Conan Doyle wasn't grand enough. He had to throw an Ignatius in there. Very nice. He was actually a trained ophthalmologist. Ophthalmologist? I'm not sure I'm saying that right. <laughs> but no one ever actually visited his ophthalmology practice in Portsmouth. Uh, Sherlock Holmes is actually based on a real person. Arthur Conan Doyle's professor, Dr. Joseph Bell. But he was a clever sausage. Uh, he actually got bored of Sherlock Holmes, and in nineteen and uh, sorry, eighteen ninety one, he said, "I'm thinking of slaying Holmes and winding him up for good and all. He takes my mind from better things." He wanted to write about different things. I can understand that. You know, it gets boring after a while doing the same things, isn't it? He was actually a bit of a crime fighter of his uh, in his own right. He led his own investigations, and uh, he actually helped exonerate two wrongly convicted men. Go 
Arthur Conan Doyle, you rock. He was knighted in 1902 by King Edward VII, but not for his fantastic fiction, but for a report he wrote in support of the Great Boar War. Oh, that was the name of the report of the Great Boar War. He died in 1930 in a garden, and he had a flower in one hand, and he used the other to clutch his heart. And his last words to his wife were, you are wonderful. How lovely is that? <laughs> and perhaps to celebrate Arthur Conan Doyle's birthday, you could wear a deer stalker and turn into a super sleuth for the day, even if you're only going to investigate who ate the last of the damn cookies. Because, you know, let's be honest, it's really frustrating when somebody eats the last of the cookies. And on to the 25th of May, when uh, Terry Pratchett uh, fans celebrate the People's Revolution of the glorious 25th of May. They use this time to honour the fictional memories of John Keel, Di Dickens, Ned Coates, Billy Wiglet, Horace Nancy Ball, Cecil Clapman and Red Shoe, who in the book The Night Watch, this world novel, uh, they died they, uh, during the People's Revolution. And the survivors gather every 25th of May to, to remember their fallen brethren while wearing lilac blooms on their lapel. Since the book was released, people have been doing that in memory of those uh, dead characters, but also since Pratchett announced his Alzheimer's and subsequently since his death, people have been wearing them on the 25th of May to remember him too. 25th of May is also Towel Day. So, uh, in celebration of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and if you read it, you know how important towels are, right? I mean, so people carry a towel on the 25th of May to remember Douglas Adams' advice of not panicking, don't panic. So, you know, if you could combine the two, couldn't you, and carry a lilac towel? Douglas Adams had a few suggestions on how to use your towel. He said you could use it to sail a mini raft down the slow, heavy river moth. You could wave your towel in emergencies as a distress signal. signal perfectly acceptable. You could sleep under it beneath the stars, which shine so redly on the desert moon of Cacrophoon. You could wrap it around your head to ward off noxious fumes or avoid the gaze of the ravenous bug blatter beast of Troll. You could wet it and use it for hand-to-hand -hand combat even. And let's be honest, if you've ever done that, it really hurts. It's a good weapon. Hmm. <laughs> and if it's still clean, Douglas Adams suggests you may use the towel to dry off. Uh, for me, though, I'm going to roll it up and use it as a pillow. Or perhaps use it as a shield against all the nerd haters out there. Because do you know what? I'm geeky and I'm proud. I don't care. A clever's revolt. <laughs> I don't know what that last bit was about. <laughs> That's it for this week. Join me next month when I don't know what I'll be talking about. Probably some more bookish nonsense. Have a lovely month and I will speak to you all soon. Bye.